Everyone, I would like to introduce you to a good friend of mine. His name is Michelangelo Flores. And this guy, I have been following him for many, many years. And we've been following each other on Instagram. And one thing that really struck about me was uh, he's a really cool guy is that he likes James Bond. He likes his Rolex <laughs> watches. He loves his watches. I noticed that. And he likes his wine. Really cool guy. So I figured, you know, let's let's get him on the show and, uh, you know, see how he thinks and see what he's up to. So uh, welcome to the show, Michael Angelo. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, it's funny because we've actually known each other for a while, like years and years on. And I actually first discovered you, I think, uh, man, it was too long ago. But I saw you, right? I think you were still back in the Philippines then, I think. Yeah. And you had interviews like all the time. You've been on TV. And I saw one of your interviews with one of these supermodels, man. And I'm thinking, all right, <laughs> this guy's an OG. Who is this guy about? And we had some mutual connections. And that's where it kind of, that's where it spiraled from. And I've been following you ever since or <laughs> following each other. Uh, I don't want to sound like a like a stalker or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> I, I follow like I see some of your, you know, your dog walks and some of your life changes too. I think you moved back to Sydney, and and you have your your marriage and you got your yeah. We'll talk about watches later. Uh, before we move on, a wristwatch check. Yeah, uh, I've got. Yeah, I've got my G Shock actually. Got the G Shock today. So exciting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm back because I'm about to go to the gym after this. It's the the present that my mentor slash combat instructor, he actually gave me this as a present years ago. And it's just like my training watch. So it's like my everyday get dirty, get things done watch. So how about you? Uh, what have you got on? Man, just, uh, I've got the, uh, I've got my, my Rolex bluesy at the moment. Bluesy. Got the bluesy. Yeah. That's what so, I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. I noticed that you got the Omega, um, you know, so James Bond, he wears the Omega. And you wear the same mm. one as him. And uh, yeah, yes. I've also got the G-Shock as well. The G-Shock is also a good watch. Yeah, G-Shock's handy, bro. Yeah. It, it takes a beating. Yeah. Uh, I have not adjusted in years and still pretty accurate. Uh, yeah. But yeah, the Omega, uh, I can't show it. But if, the Omega is with Omega. Because um, having the bracelet changed, because the clasp is, it, it's uncomfortable a little bit. So changing mm. the bracelet, plus getting a little bit serviced. Uh, I had a Daytona, which I've now sold, and I'm acquiring another one. Nice. <laughs> Go figure. Uh, but yeah, we'll talk about watches a little bit later, yeah. not to be like super complicated, because that's another can of worms, bro. Yeah. <laughs> the watch <laughs> industry. Yeah, we can talk hours and hours about that. Man. Heaps, man. Awesome. Mm, absolutely. Cool. So I think... Um... You're currently in Japan, but I think correct. You, yes, you, before you were in Melbourne, but now you're in Japan. That's right. So, wow, so what you are know. you doing? Yeah. So what we're doing in what are you doing in Japan at the moment? Okay. Um, without getting too complicated, the main thing I'm focusing on right now, uh, as I mentioned, I got my social media agency, which I've launched. Uh, of course, I've been doing a bit of investing as well. Uh, I know you like you're an investor as well. I do a bit of swing trading slash kind of medium term thing. And I'm doing that only for like certain individuals because in that sense, I'm not, I'm not a financial advisor. I just want to put that out there. So that's kind of the things that I'm doing. I've done some freelance work. I've also done some English teaching as well, which is pretty fun. And, and yeah, I've been here for years now, actually. Time flies. Yeah. And we'll talk about life in Japan uh, if you want, because there's a lot of things that are, because a lot of people ask me, should I move here? Yes or no? Uh, if you want to visit here, absolutely come and visit. It's an amazing place to visit for a vacation. If you want to live here, though, there are some questions that you're going to need to ask yourself. Because uh, it could be yes, it could be no, depending on your personality and your life situation. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, okay. Now. <laughs> okay awesome so you're in japan you're teaching english as well and uh, you've got your uh, agency i noticed that uh, you posted something about your your new agency so so what is Brackets. it that you're doing uh, is it marketing or social media or what is it that uh, specifically that you're doing in terms of your agency okay good question so to keep it quite simple basically we take your brand and get you to go viral on every single platform like 
FB, Insta, TikTok, Telegram. Actually, Telegram's a different animal because that's kind of like a pseudo list that you can market to. And of course, my new favorite, Twitter. Uh, actually, I do a lot of Twitter spaces here and there, which is kind of similar to like a pod, but it's audio only. So you don't see, you don't see my faces. So I don't need to wear makeup. I don't yeah. wear makeup anyway. But, <laughs> you know. uh, but yeah, man, uh, I'm surprised this is like the first time we should have been doing this ages ago. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, uh, we just follow each other and we just see each other's stories and we just, that, that's all we do, right? So it's good to hmm. do a face-to-face -face thing finally. And uh, Yeah, finally, you know, it, it's been, again, we've known each other for years. Uh, speaking of following each other, uh, okay, so I've got your bio right here, man. Like it's right in front of me. It's like yeah. floating. So I got your bio. <laughs> <laughs> and if you you mentioned about following each other, you were traveling very recently, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I do a lot of um. Well, just recently I went to Europe. So I went to yes. Uh, first of all, I started off in in London, and then I went off to Amsterdam. Then it went down um to you know the Am uh, Amsterdam then down to Italy France you know Switzerland around the area there uh it's it beautiful you know I filmed the whole thing put it all together and then uh, just recently went camping went to Melbourne so you know just um just try my best to try and live life and try to get the most out of it through traveling so yeah <laughs> yeah that's funny because like you were on the way to Europe just as I was about to leave. Yeah, yeah. I think you hopped on. I think I was kind of half drunk and I was like smoking. You were turning uh, a cigar, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think I nearly <laughs> fell into the pool or something. And you were joining my life. I'm <laughs> like, wow, it's isn't like four in the morning there or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I remember that. I was in um I was in Austria at the time. And I think I I was on, yeah. yeah, and the, I was next to me was these really beautiful mountains. And then I was just on Instagram and I saw it. Your, your name came up as live and I was like, oh cool he's live so I clicked on you and I remember you were sitting back on a chair having a cigar you know just like pondering you know just like chilling out and he goes oh how you doing Kwa? what's going on <laughs> <It was> like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, was, I probably had a couple of drinks by then but yeah have your whiskey so can I ask you yeah. yeah go for it uh, can I ask you um so you travel around Europe uh, I want your opinion on this because maybe we were a little bit different what has been the the best so far the most memorable the like best number so far. one okay you've gone through all these countries what would you say is like the highlight like boom oh yeah i, I get asked that a lot actually um yeah just looking back i think the highlight for me was uh definitely paris i was in i was in paris for a week and other countries, it was about one or two days. So it was very short, but Paris, I was there for a whole week and just get to, got to experience everything. Like, um, got to have a look at the Eiffel Tower, uh, went shopping, met a lot of interesting people, tried the cultures and everything. Um, I'm not saying that was better than everything, but it was just, I don't know, something about Paris, something about the, the culture, the whole vibe of Paris just really got my attention. And, um, yeah, I don't know. It was just, I think that was it. And I just felt that, oh, wow. I wish that if I was in my twenties, I, I wish I'd just live there in my twenties, you know, for, for a couple of years. I think everyone should at least live there for a few years. Just experience Paris, you know, um, there's something about that place. I don't know what it is, but it's just, it's got that vibe. That's it. You speak French, bro? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 that, that is on my list of my, my on my bucket list. So I want to learn how to speak <laughs> French, you know, so yeah, I got my French hat over there. So <laughs> <laughs> I'll get there eventually yeah yeah but that's a pretty big statement bro like you wish you actually lived there for a while um and by extension to that i, I mean i've traveled a little bit maybe and i've kind of have my choices as well of where to live uh in, in my case i'm living here now in japan right mm. i've experienced singapore a lot so that's going to be high on my list uh, i've been to germany many times because i have family there uh, so you said you would live in in france for a while do you have any others that you feel that you would think okay if i was younger or even now like mm. you'd spend a couple of years in besides yeah, france definitely um number one is also singapore as well i've been there several times 
Singapore is a, a small place, but it just seems that it's got everything. It has everything that you need, um, that, that you can have an enjoyable life. It seems that the, the government looks after its people. I'm not saying that Australia doesn't, oh, I don't know, who knows, but, but just, <laughs> <laughs> who knows? But I think, I feel that Singapore is also another great place to be. I've stayed in Marine Bay Sands. I've stayed in other places over there as well. Um, a bit humid there, but I don't know. The people there it just seems like just a really nice place to be. Uh, Singapore so that's another one yeah absolutely I mean mm. Singapore for me is like near perfect mm. the only deal breaker for me bro was the weather humidity I, isn't it yeah 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 I don't mind it but I just like four seasons and Japan has that yeah uh, Japan has all these different festivals for all these different seasons yeah and all these different activities to do uh and then like in terms of fashion as well like in singapore I, where am i going to wear my winter jackets at? yeah 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 uh, but it's a near perfect city like the safety the cleanliness and i mean i don't mind having strict laws uh, as you know it's famous for having strict laws mm. uh, i once had the same discussion with someone that if the laws are strict you got to keep me safe as well right if the safety is low, then the laws should, you know, naturally be not as strict. The, the kind of funny part is when you have a country that's super strict and still not safe, but let's, you know, we'll get into that at some point. Mm. But yeah, so that's kind of where I gauge my places to live. But Singapore is up there, an mm. amazing place. As you said, quite small. You can go around the whole city in like a day. Yeah, I know, right. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay. are you planning on leaving uh, Japan anytime soon? Are you going to stay for a few more years and move to another place? Or okay, that's a very good question. I had the same discussion literally last night, and what I like to the plan that I have. I'm actually currently moving in the process of moving somewhere else in in Tokyo. That's why I have a lot of my stuff packed. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I can't show a lot of my watches because they're bad. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, what I, to keep it simple, I want to have a, a, an HQ in Tokyo. I want to have a headquarters in Tokyo mm. and then just travel for like a month or so in other places and then come back to Tokyo because I've got family in Australia, family in the Philippines, family in Europe. Mm. So I want to go visit, go visit them. And of course, visit, you know, meet some business partners of mine as well. Mm. But I want to have Japan as a base because the trade off is really good, man. The, mm. the convenience, the lifestyle, and the, the, the more you go up in economic status, there's like so many other options that are unlocked. Uh, just to a little bit describe Japan in a simple way. And this is my own experience, by the way. You can ask other people. They might tell you a different story. It's like if you play a video game and you put it like in hard mode, you put it at like the hardest difficulty <laughs> and you jump in here and that's what it's like. You get the cultural barriers, the language barriers. You don't know how the systems work you're trying to familiarize yourself with the banking system and the medical system and all that everything's hard different language it's like you have a different patch but the rewards are phenomenal like the rewards are just the things that you unlock mm. once you get through like the barriers because it is a stressful life i'm not gonna lie there's okay. a lot of things that are can be stressful and if you're not mentally prepared for the challenges there are some kind of lonely periods and there are some stressful periods. And sometimes you're just in a crowded train and you're like, ah, uh, you know, where am I, what am I doing with myself? You get through that, especially during the, the pandemic, when it was at, like the height of the pandemic. Uh, some people are very stressed, man. Uh, but I was happy to be here. Once you get through that barrier, it's fantastic, bro. Like the mm. food, the activities, the, the sites and the people you meet also once you get a little bit warmer because i'll be honest man when you come here you're treated like you're a foreigner 
basically. I mean, obviously you're a foreigner and you're treated as such. And it's kind of hard to be in that kind of circle. So you're, you got these dudes, right? These Japanese folks who are in their circle of friends and they'll say hi to you and they'll be nice to you. But then it's like, okay, we're going back to our groups. We're, we're going back to our little Japanese kind of, well, the Osaka is a little different. Uh, the Kansai, the kind of the Western area, a little bit different. There's some stories there. Yeah. But generally speaking, uh, my experience in Tokyo, once you get through that barrier and once you kind of climb that economic kind of ladder, absolutely fantastic. It's it's not for everyone, but it's super rewarding, man. And am I going to stay here? It's lo- I don't see a reason to leave. That's, that's I'll leave it at that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. When I think of um, Japan, my experiences are just travel like, as it's from a tourist, right? So you just go, obviously you have money, you cashed up when you go travel and then you go try out different places, but you don't really get to experience it from the perspective where you've been there for several years. So you've seen those, those little things such as the, um, the little circles and um, the little groups, right. And the economic barrier where you got to break past. So that's interesting. When I think of Japan, everyone's really friendly and everyone's really nice. Um, yeah, but okay. I guess there's uh, those little little circles that you have to try and yeah break through, I guess. Yeah, yeah I mean, because Japan is, is a very, very traditional society. Uh, there is slowly becoming to have a little bit of a Western influence as well, a little bit of globalization. But going through, like, say, Melbourne, which is like a multicultural thing. Uh, and this is funny. I get into discussions where do I prefer multicultural or do I prefer, what's the word? U- is it unicultural? I'm not sure what the word is. Or, or monocultural? I don't know what, what the word is. Uh, but, yeah, if I'm in Melbourne, right, I'll have friends who are, like, Arabs and Italians and some Aussies as Vietnamese folks and we'll be in a room and everyone's like different we have certain different templates certain different values certain ways of doing things but we still have like a mutual understanding because we're you know I, I curate my friends to a point where we're going similar paths but coming into Japan where it's like 90 percent like a template uh, if you if you know what I mean, if it's a template where a Japanese person is gen- generally has these qualities, and if you if you're not Japanese, you're kind of you're not really expected to be in that that template. However, uh, coming here, and if you don't understand the template, if you don't understand why are they like this, why do they act like that, they say this but they mean this, you know why. Why is a system like that? You know, why are they generally quiet in this situation, but in this situation, they're just suddenly all out bubbly. So once you get through that, once you get through a little bit of the, you know, the culture shocks and the culture differences, then you start to warm up to them a little bit and you start to be, you still, I'm not saying I'm Japanized. <laughs> a lot of people tease me, like I'm a weeb and stuff, and you know, But once you get through, you still have, you go through a little bit of the barrier, but you still keep your kind of foreign identity. I believe it's absolutely rewarding. Also, the advantage is once you learn the kind of Japanese template, you have a base on how to deal with the next person and the next person and the Mm. next person. Uh, Does that make sense so far? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so let's say you meet one Japanese friend or a couple and you make all these mistakes the next few Japanese people you meet you remember not to make those same mistakes because you've already learned from the default template that they have there's still some individuals there's still some individualism as well that's very subtle but the general you know Japanese template is there let's say i'll give an example Uh, let's say not talking on the train Uh, in mel i don't know what melbourne is like now but back then it's like anything goes Mm. when i was there 
but simply put not talk, just being quiet on the train is like a japanese trait we, we don't want to disturb other people another one is like the almost near obsession with lining up for things and i remember there was a gallery for i think it was like one of the bond movies or it was mission impossible or something and there was a an area where you can take photos and you're supposed to take photos in that area because they're encouraging you to take photos and there was like no one there to supervise absolutely nobody to supervise but these japanese people they made a queue anyway they made a full line to take a photo in this booth even though there's no supervisor there's nobody telling you to line up nobody telling you how to organize but they just organize themselves and i look at this and i'm thinking why is that yeah, there's nobody tell there's no marshal there's no supervisor and i and i said to myself this is just the way how japanese people roll so once you understand the basic template it gets a little easier to it's like you level up every single time whereas mm -hmm. in melbourne at least my experience everyone's different a little at least a little bit more different you learn one thing from one person but then you kind of meet another person and it's like you got to start from not zero but you, there's there's a different kind of template you have to learn i'm exaggerating a little bit but I, i'm sure you you get the point mm -hmm. i'm sure that's fascinating man it's like you're playing a game and it's uh it's like a game and actually. it's like you're, you're leveling up you're learning about these people and you're making mistakes and but then you're learning you're growing you're, you're understanding the template the japanese template and then hmm. you've been through a lot of these experiences and it just get, you just get better and better when you're interacting with new people with new japanese people. yes and that's actually get... a very good analogy yeah very good analogy so imagine let's say you're in australia and Australia is a game. It's an RPG. You're this character. You know where the highest rewards are. You know where the strongest enemies are. You know where the, how to farm gold. You know how you know where the best shops are. You know where to go to level yourself up. And you've got your your party members. You've got your team. When you go to another country, uh, Japan also, but when you go to another country in general, it's like you have an update. Or you have a patch, right? Because you know how some games you update, <clears throat> you get a patch, and then everything's kind of changed. You have to figure out where is the most gold kept, where are the strongest bosses, because it's different from the previous patch. Exactly. Right? It's different from the previous version. You have to find out where is the, you know, where are your best armors? Where where do you get your best weapons? And you have to. It's still the same game, though, right? It is still the same game, just different, different update, different versions. Mm. So yeah, I love that analogy. <laughs> so can you give us an example of um, of a time when you've sort of like reached that next level, and you've know you've reached that next level, and you've it's like all this um, times when you've been collecting all this this knowledge and then you finally applied it on a particular situation or a person and then you realize you've reached another level in Japan. Can you give an example of something like that? That is a very good question. Very, very good question. Um, I think you'll resonate with this too because you and I, I'm, I'm sure you and I are both networkers, right? So here's the thing. When you, <clears throat> there's kind of like three stages, maybe four, but three the first stage you come here to Japan as a tourist. And you go through all the temples, you go through all the restaurants, you go through the shrines, do the cultural stuff, all the service level stuff, which I still enjoy. I still enjoy going to like a like an izakaya or which is a Japanese uh, pub. I still go. I actually love touring people here when they visit. I love touring people. Like a couple of years ago, before the pandemic, I was touring some some YouTubers from America and Canada. And I just loved taking them through stuff that I've seen a million times, but it feels like it's my first time because it's their first time. And I enjoy it just the same. <clears throat> and then you get through kind of stage two, which I like to call it. I just made this up just today. Stage two, you actually live here and you get through like the lifestyle where 
you have to be grounded. You get your bank accounts, your phone numbers. You try to mold yourself into your different hobbies, your routines. And then you still do like a bit of the touristy stuff with a bit of your lifestyle thrown in there as well. So, you know, the supermarkets, you know, you you get used to your routine. Uh, I know where my gym is at. I know where my my hairdresser or hair you know, barber place, uh, you know, and the dentist. You, you kind of fix your bases here. And then a lot of people just get stuck there. They get stuck in just that. And they, if they refuse to progress, they stay at the, the same level. And then they get bored, they get complacent, and they're just thinking, you know, what are they doing here? And then move back home or move to another country. Now, when to answer your question, you get up to this, what I like to call stage three, I'll call that for now. There was a point where I was networking with some people I like to regard as the OGs, like people, when you network with some Japanese people who are kind of up there, and I'm not saying, I'm not saying you just network with anyone, you network with certain people, I'll just say. So I was with this guy, he was like the vice president of this huge company. And, you know, I connected with him, long story short, and he took me to a bunch of places. We went to this like counter dining, like sushi place where there's like no menu. You literally just talk to the chef and he just asks you what you want. There's no menu. The chef just asks you, okay, what do you like? And you can leave it to him or you can order like custom dishes, just whatever you like. So I let my buddy just do everything. And he invited like two of his like female secretaries to join us. So it was like pimping, right? <laughs> so me and him, two girls, his assistants, these young girls were like in a sushi place, just pimping, enjoying food and sake and everything. And this dude, like he, he paid for everything. He just was balling and he took us to like this other club one of these like places that is just absolutely gorgeous and then i realized you know this is the, first of all this guy is not your average guy right you realize that there is a life beyond stage two there once you open some doors there's a whole different like kind of underground experience that you have to go through some barriers to access. And that's where I thought, okay, if I didn't network, let's say if I just remained the same, I would never know this even existed. Some of the places I've been to, some of the restaurants, the hotels, the people you meet as well. Uh, some of these, you know, I don't know if I can name drop here because, you know, confidentiality, but yeah, man, uh, you have to level yourself up in some way, gain access to bigger fish. So many doors will open and just mind blown the things you have access to. So, uh, and I've had more experiences like that as well, because the places that the stage two people eat, hang out is so different from like, there's like another world almost. So I hope that answers your question a little mm. bit. It's, it's like you've just given the, the playbook on surviving in a foreign country, because just like what you said, a lot of people who, um, who go to another country, they just experience just the surface level stuff. They, they even just reach level one and then they either run out of money or something happens and then they just go back home. But somehow you've stayed for years and you've managed to survive for years, which is a big accomplishment. It's huge because it's, you had to survive in terms of um, economics, like you need money to be coming in. You need to combat uh, loneliness as well. You pass that, you network with a lot of people, you got through different areas of Japan. So um, I think it sounds like you've just uncovered a huge playbook you know, to survive in another foreign country, you know? So. That's actually a, I'm surprised you put it that way because I'm thinking of, because I used to ghost drive, right? And I'm thinking, yeah, that's a lot of content. I'm still learning though. 
uh, because there's some things, a little bit of some annoying stuff. Let's say if I get something delivered, like a high priority parcel, and if I'm like not here, I have to call them by phone because some some of these couriers, some of these delivery services don't have websites. And I had to speak to them in like full Japanese and like tell them the details. I'm going to be home at this time. And it's like, oh, it's like a headache, right? And then when you, just some lifestyle things as well. Having to, let's say, this one recently, I booked uh, at this restaurant and then I just went straight in. And the staff, I thought they recognized me because they just saw me and they just redirected me to my table and that was it right that was the end of it and then i've got an email saying i was never there i'm thinking but i was there and then i had to call them back explaining like i was there you know like why do i have to pay these fees like i actually was there right so just little things like that like having to try to fix things that i, I never actually had to deal with like in australia so yeah Mm. Would you ever come back to Australia or anything, or are you just going to keep traveling? What's your thoughts? Uh, to chill with you, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we have uh, a cigar or something. Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, and then, yeah, I've got family there, and also, you know, because I, I grew up there, it, it's still my home. I still consider mm. it a home. Uh, but then the world is the world is our home, dude. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, now I want to ask you some questions too. Yeah, go for it. Because, you know, I, I'm also, I've got your profile here and I'm also fascinated on, because uh, we have a lot of common things. Uh, we spoke about watches and quick one, quick one. The first thing on your bio, books and self-development. Uh, are you reading anything right now? Yeah, at the moment, uh, I'm reading two books actually at the moment. So nighttime, I read spiritual books. I read a lot about Buddhism um, and then during wow. the day, okay. Yeah, yeah. So then during the day, I read. I'm reading this other book called um, Rock Steady. It's all about healing uh, vertigo and tinnitus. Because just recently, I went through a bit of struggle, health struggle, where now my ears are starting to ring, and that's oh. actually tinnitus. Yeah, it's it's really um, distressing, and I've just been trying to to deal with that. And um, but you know the volume goes up and down. But that book is really helpful. It's all about healing your tinnitus through neuroplasticity. It's all about positive thoughts, all about um, taking care of yourself and you're just rewiring the brain. So I thought that was really interesting. But now I'm managing it very well, which is good. But I'm seeing ENT doctors about that one there. So, but yeah, you know, I'm yeah, I had that. no idea about that. Anyway. Yeah, man. Yeah. I went through um, my own personal hell last month because it just, it flared up. God, so man. yeah, yeah. I think um, anyone who goes through it is just try and imagine a ringing sound in your ear that just constant just goes on it's just relentless it just doesn't go away and you can't it's like a i know you are relentless yourself yeah yeah yeah, you? yeah i know man yeah my favorite word right and now i've got this so um <laughs> but yeah i mean i'm hopeful that it will be resolved anyway so um there's lots of studies in which you can overcome it so i'm, I'm just going through that path at the moment it's my little yeah my little prayers, journey at the moment. yeah 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 so yeah, yeah i'm just reading all, those books at the moment mm. we're all having different challenges man we're all fighting our private battles uh, yeah. thanks for sharing that right because uh, i noticed a lot of your stories you've got like the zen music going yeah, on yeah yeah man um, yeah i'm also reading two books uh, the the way of the wolf that's oh, yeah. kind of a recent one John Joffrey, uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't have it here it's like in the other room uh, there's a lot of concepts that i have taken away from that i've got another weird one it's actually right here this is going to be a little bit weirdo book uh, this one, intro stats. Stats. Ah, cool. What's that? Maths. Maths Mathematics. Eh? It's like maths? about histograms. Um, it's got like histograms and stuff, oh. charts, uh, stat. Yeah, stats like scatter plots and all that. Uh, I got this because I want to take investing seriously. Uh, as you know, as I mentioned earlier, hmm. I like investing. And knowing how to read charts, knowing how to extract data, knowing how to, you know, just be able to use data, quant sorry, what's the word? Quali quantitative, quantitative uh, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. In a strategic way, I think maths is absolutely essential. It's mm. funny because most people, like, they hate maths. What do I need it for? 
uh, and I was the same way. I'm guilty of this. When I was in school, I'm thinking, you know, why am I going to need maths in real life? You know, it's not going to be useful. <laughs> and now years and years on, I'm thinking maths is like the, this is like, I'm not a Harry Potter guy, but this is like the book of spells, man. This is like the yes. magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, if, if any of you are watching this, do not underestimate the power of maths. Definitely. All right. Yeah. So we've got about three and a half minutes left. Um, wow, just, time Yeah, flies. fast, man. So uh, last two questions. Okay, so um, let's say you go to a time machine, press a button and talk to your younger self, maybe 10 years ago. What would you say to your younger self? And how can people contact you? Okay. First question. All I've got to say is I'm going to look myself dead in the eye. Right? I'm going to look myself right in the eye and say, you got this. And be ready for what's coming. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Uh, so how can I contact me? Well, I'm on, I'm basically on different socials. So Instagram is how we usually connect. Facebook is one. Uh, Twitter, I'm on there as well. And yeah, so that's, that's basically the first place to go. I got my website as well, uh, which uh, I'm, not, I'm not actually, I need to like, post it because it's kind of newish but yeah instagram's fine uh, i read the dms there uh, twitter also uh, fb so you know that's kind of the best place to start nice awesome. yeah but we have to do this again man because I, I know that you and i we've got a lot of stuff to share we've got a lot of yeah. value as well to to give yeah. to our audiences it's good to finally speak to you my friend uh, it's yeah. been a long time coming uh, I'm honored that you'd have me on. I appreciate. Thanks for having me on, my friend. Anytime, man. Honor is mine. We'll we'll organize another one soon. We'll talk about other stuff. There's there's heaps more we can talk about. So, but uh, we'll set something up in future. But in the meantime, um, yeah. Once again, man. Great connecting with you again. Um, wish you all the best. Your time in leveling up in Japan. Uh, more watches Likewise. too. Yeah. More watches. Um, <laughs> and you too, man. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. more blessings. And we'll talk about that as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Um, yeah, and, and I wish you luck in your uh, your condition as well. I know you'll pull through it. Man. Like, I've seen you during the years. You've you've proven it. So, you know, I'm, I'm honored to be connected with you, my friend. Thanks, so, man. Yeah. Awesome. Anyway, cool. stay no frosty. Worries, man. Stay frosty, right, man. Enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs> All right. Take care, buddy. Woo!